Thank you so much for tuning in to Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. I love producing Linux-related content for you, but I can't do it alone. If the content on this channel has been helpful to you, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And one of the ways that you could do that is by becoming a patron, which will give you access to exclusive perks. Also, be sure to check out my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition. And while you're here, be sure to subscribe. New content is uploaded each and every week. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get started with today's video. So, I have a really fun episode in store for you guys today in the Bash Scripting series, and I hope you enjoy it. In fact, I'm sure you will, because what we're going to do is write a backup script. So this is going to be one of those scripts that's actually useful for something, and another example of one of the many different things that we could do with a Bash script. So let's just dive right in, and I'll show you how to write a backup script in Bash. So let's just get started. In this particular lesson, we're going to create our backup script, and it's easily going to be the most advanced script that we've written through the series, and that makes sense. It's the final script that we will be writing, and, well, we need to utilize as much as we've learned as possible within this script, and that'll help make sure that these concepts are actually shown in a way that's going to, well, click. Maybe there could have been something we've gone over in the past. Maybe you weren't 100% clear on why we were doing that. But I think after this lesson, everything is going to become much more clear. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do is type out the script, and then I'll explain what it's doing. All right, so I finished writing the script, and you know what? We have a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and dissect what I'm doing and then it'll help you understand how a lot of the concepts that we've gone over so far all fit together. So here I have my shebang. You already know what that is. We've done that pretty much every time. And here I have a standard comment. If somebody is looking at this script after me, then I want them to know what I'm trying to do here. And what I'm doing is fairly simple. So you could actually make a sound argument that this comment wasn't even necessary. So we have an if statement here. And this particular if statement is checking to see if we have two arguments. If the number of arguments provided by the user is not equal to exactly two, then it's going to echo this statement right here to give the user some helpful information pertaining to how to run the script. It's going to ask them to try again, and we're forcing exit code one right here. Maybe in a future version of the script, we might want to track that. So here I have another if statement. And this one in particular is using command-v to find out whether or not rsync is installed on the system. Now, all output, when it comes to this command right here, that's being run within the if statement, is being sent to dev null. And that's because we're not interested in seeing the output of this command. We just want to check for the existence of rsync. That's all we're doing here. And if there is any output, let's send it to dev null. And we're going to send both standard error and standard output to dev null which is what that does. But the if statement, as far as that's concerned, all it's doing is it's checking to see whether or not rsync is available. And if it's not, it's letting the user know that they do need to have rsync installed. And then it's giving them the instruction to use their package manager to install it and try again. And this time we're exiting too. So in the future, if we actually wanted to build some logic around that, then we would be able to do that because we have a different exit code for a different problem. And that's a good idea. I can't really think of any reason for a script to share the same exit code everywhere. It's very common that you have different exit codes for different problems and you react according to those problems. Anyway, we close out the if statement and scrolling down further, I'm creating another variable and this one is called current date and it's going to be set equal to the output of the command date plus capital Y hyphen percent M hyphen percent D. And what that's going to do is actually format the output of the date command to match this format right here. And the reason why I chose that format is because anything that uses that format is gonna be much easier to sort alphanumerically. So year, month, day, 
regardless of which geographic area you live in, that could actually be the norm for you. In the United States, we really don't typically write dates like that. But even though we don't normally write our dates that way, I actually prefer it because when you list the storage and you follow that particular style, then it's going to make a lot more sense when you show a listing of objects. But anyway, we have current date, we're capturing the output of the date command and we're storing it in current date. Next, I have this really long string right here, rsync underscore options. Inside the double quotes, these are all options that you can actually pass to rsync if you are running rsync manually. But basically here, we have the options dash A, V, and B. A is archive mode, if you didn't already know that. That tries to retain all the metadata, like permissions and whatnot, when it comes to the files that are being copied. V is verbose. That actually shows what's going on in output. We want to see the output of the rsync command as it's working. And the option B is telling rsync, we would rather not have files replaced on the target. What rsync actually does is it syncs one directory to another. So if you have files in directory A and you run rsync against directory A as the source and directory B as the target, then the contents of directory A will be copied over to directory B. But what if you update a file on directory A and then you run it again? Well, what's going to happen is that file is going to replace the version that's been backed up at directory B. But maybe you might not want that. You might want to create a backup file. So that way, if you need to go back to the previous version of a file that gets replaced on the other end, you can do that. That's what B allows you to do. But we also go a step further with this. We have dash dash backup dash dir. Some options when it comes to Linux commands are actually spelled out with two hyphens, and this is one of those. Backup directory is actually something that you can use in addition to the B option that I have here. And what that tells rsync to do is instead of creating the backup file, if a file is going to be replaced in the same location, copy the backup file somewhere else. Basically, we want a differentials folder. Files that are replaced, we want them to go somewhere very specific. And dollar sign two is going to be the second argument. In this case, it's going to represent the target directory. And that's where we want the backup files to be copied to. But underneath that, we want it to be copied into a subdirectory. And then we need the dollar sign right here because current date is actually the variable. That's really important. See, even I forget to do that sometimes. Anyway, current date, we declared that right here. And that's going to store the current date basically the current date when the script is being run in this format. So what you can glean from this is that any files that are going to be, you know, overwritten on the target are instead going to be moved into a directory named current date. But current date is actually a variable. So it's going to equal today's date. So that way, what we can do is we can go into a folder that is named after a specific date. If we're looking for a previous version of a file, Maybe we want to, I don't know, restore a file that was backed up last week. Then we could look for a date folder that has last week's date as its name, and we could find that version right here. Now, something to understand about rsync is that it will create a directory if it doesn't already exist. So the current date directory is not going to exist where we're copying the files to. So for example, if my backup dir and this is the argument right here is, I don't know, slash backup, for example, that's the directory on the file system where we're actually copying files to, then the current date folder named after the current date will be slash backup slash 2022-03-31, today's date. And every time this script runs, assuming we're running it every day, it's going to create a new incrementals folder named after the date. So that way we can always go back and fetch a previous version of a file if we need to do so. Dash dash delete. What that does is it actually makes sure that the target directory is a clone of the source directory. So if I have, I don't know, 10 files in the source directory and I'm backing those up, but I delete one of those. So I only have nine. And the last time I ran the script, it backed up all 10. But now I've deleted one of those files. Well, this is actually going to delete that same file on the target if it's not present on the source, which is basically a true sync. You want to be careful with that, though, because with delete, it's really going to delete. But what's really cool about this is that since we have the B option and the backup directory or backup dir option set, then delete won't actually delete anything 
but it will move it into the incremental directory, which is pretty cool. Try run. That is the most important option of all. If you remember no other option when it comes to rsync, dash dash dry dash run should absolutely be the option that you memorize first. You could think of dry run as exactly that. It's not actually going to copy anything anywhere. In fact, it's going to do absolutely nothing but create a simulation of what it would have done if you didn't have the dry run option here. So in this case, it's only going to be a pretend backup. RSync will evaluate everything that you're trying to do, and it'll give you output, and that output will be as if it actually ran, but it's not going to actually copy anything anywhere. You could think of this as demo mode. And the reason why I say that this is very important is because you always want to test an rsync script before you run it, because if you have any typo, you can actually blow away an entire directory that has important things in there if you have some options that are not valid. So dry run is just to make sure that everything is running the way we think it should. And then when we're comfortable, we're confident, we would then remove the dry run option to have it back up for real. Now, word of the wise, if you do create a backup script like this and you do test it and it does test well and you do put it in production, make sure you actually remove the dry run option. Otherwise, you might be under the impression that you're getting backups, but it's doing absolutely nothing. And the logs will actually look like it's doing something because it is producing output. Just make sure that you're checking for the dry run option and that you only have it here if you really do indeed want to test your script. I'm going to leave it here for now because, well, I haven't even run it yet. I don't even know if this works. I could have a typo in the script. There's a lot of things that I had to type in here, so it's very possible that I have an error staring me right in the face right now, and I wouldn't even know about it. Anyway, continuing on, we have a subshell right here that is running which rsync in the background. And what that's going to return is the fully qualified command to rsync on the system. That actually varies from one distribution or operating system to another, and by coding it this way, the script is a little bit more portable. Next, we want to give rsync some options. So the options that we add in here are going to be replaced right here. Next, we have dollar sign one. That's the first argument. And in this case, that should actually be the source directory. And we're also going to need the user to type in the target directory. Where do we want the backups to be sent to? But not to be outdone, I'm actually giving it a subfolder here called current. And this system, I really like this system. When you run this in production, it makes a lot of sense because you're going to have backup directories and a current directory as well. So all the current versions of files will be found in the current directory and all the replaced, deleted, or otherwise overwritten files will be in a backup directory. So it makes it really obvious where to go if you want the current file or a previous version of a file, well, you can get it from the associated directory. Now, because we have the dash V option in our sync options, which is verbose, that means it's going to actually print out a list of things that it's working on, basically. It's going to show output. What we want to do is actually redirect that output into the backup log and every time this runs on a different day, it's going to create a different backup log that's actually going to reuse the current date variable that we've declared earlier as part of its name. So every day, we will have a different backup log file. So not only will we have actual date folders with incremental files inside, or, you know, previous versions of files inside, we're actually going to have a matching log file with that same date on there. So if we didn't even know which directory a file might be in, we can then open up a log file, search the log file, and try to find it. Or we could even grep through all of the log files to find out which one in particular was actually showing the output of a file we're interested in. And that'll help us understand where that file is going to be on the backup server, and we can easily find it. So let's go ahead and save the script. And hopefully I don't have any errors. I guess we're about to find out. Now, if I list my storage, I have a number of different things here. If I go into pictures, for example, I have a number of pictures. And if you're curious why I have dad joke pictures here, that actually is for a YouTube video, specifically an April Fool's joke video. But anyway, I just wanted some random files that I could use with this backup script. And here we have some files. It doesn't really matter which ones you back up, but I'm going to choose these. And I'm going to create a directory right here called backup. 
that's where I want to send the actual backups to. Now, on your end, if this were a real backup, you would probably want to send those files to an actual backup server. Copying files from one directory on a server to another directory on the same server, that is not a backup. Let's just assume that I've mounted an external backup directory to the backup folder and it's not truly a directory that is pointing to this server or this computer itself. You just want to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So let's go ahead and run the script. I'm going to give it the pictures directory as the source directory and the backup directory as the target. Let's see what happens. Well, that's interesting. Pretty much nothing happened. Or is that the case? Let's see. Now I could tell that I have some kind of an error here because this file name, that's completely wrong. So what I'm going to do is remove that. And let's bring up the script again and see what exactly I've done wrong. I think I already know. Let's see if I'm right. And you know what? I absolutely see the error right here. There's supposed to be a percent symbol right there. See, everybody makes mistakes, right? I make mistakes, you make mistakes, we all make mistakes. No problem though. We fix the error. And this is another reason why we're testing the script. We're always going to have errors. The important thing is, what do you do about those errors? Let's go ahead and run this script again and see what happens. I'll back up my pictures directory again to the backup directory. And you know what? This log file, the name of this log file, that looks a lot better to me. And as you can see, I have some output here that is showing me what was actually backed up. But pay attention to the last line here. It says dry run. That's your indication that the dry run option is in use. That's good because we don't want to do anything until we know that it's working. But because of that, that also means that inside the backup directory, I have nothing. And of course we have nothing because we have the dry run option. It just told us what it was going to do, and that's what it put in the log file, but it didn't actually do it. So I feel like I'm pretty happy with the results here. So what I'm going to do is just pull this back up here, and I'm going to remove the dry run option at the end of the script. I'll save the file, minimize it again, now, before we actually run it again, what I want to do is just make sure that the logic actually works the way it's supposed to. So I'll run it without giving it any arguments at all. And just like you see here, it caught it. That's great. And I'll run it again and I'll give it one argument. And because we require two arguments, that's not good enough. It gave us the error. So that's great. So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and run it for real. Now, remember, I removed the dry run option here, so this should actually run it for real. Source directory is pictures, and make absolutely sure that you don't reverse these directories because that will cause problems, some not good problems. Anyway, that's the source. The target is the backup directory. Let's go ahead and run it. So it looks like it might have ran. We have the same backup log there, and that's okay because the date hasn't changed. So, of course, it's going to be writing to the same backup log file. And if we scroll up here, we see the dry run. That was the first time that we've run it. And I used two greater than signs, so it's appending to the file. It's not replacing it. So now it's actually running for real. Notice that the dry run verbiage is not present here. So if I didn't know any better, I would say that it actually probably ran the backup for real. Let's see. We have a directory named current inside backup. That's pretty cool. And if this works, the current directory should contain the current versions of all the files that I'm backing up. And it does. How cool is that? Now check this out. I'm going to try to trick rsync and have it back up a file that hasn't actually changed, but I'm going to simulate a change. So what I'll do is I'll type touch. If you recall from a previous lesson, touch will create a file if it doesn't already exist. You know what? I will actually create a brand new file right there inside the pictures directory. And not to be outdone, what I will also do is use the touch command against a file that actually exists. In this case, it's the chroma.png 
If you are curious, this is just something that I use in video editing to reference a color to remove, not something that actually pertains to anything you care about in the series, unless you do enjoy video editing, then there's that. But the touch command will create a file if it doesn't already exist, but if it does exist, it'll update the modification time on that file, making it seem like a change was made. So let's go ahead and run the backup again. But what I'm going to do this time is remove the log file. I want to start fresh. Let's see what happened. So we have our backup log file right there. Let's check the contents of that. And check that out. The backup log now only shows two files. So it noticed that I did actually make a change to the chroma ping image that we see here. It wasn't an actual change. But according to rsync, a change of modification time is a valid change and does constitute a need for backing up a file. And the testfile.txt file, that was a new file that I created. So let's see how that actually correlates to the real world scenario here, our actual backup. So again, we have the backup directory. And inside the current directory, we have the test file right there. But we also have, check this out, a backup directory as well. We also have a date folder underneath that. And here we have the original chroma.png image before I modified it. So not only is this script able to back up our files, it's able to also give us previous versions as well. So mission successful. And you know what? That's the end of our course. I will have one more video after this one. That'll be my exit message basically. But hopefully so far everything has been great for you guys and you've learned a lot. I really hope you enjoyed this course. Let me know what I could do better. Leave me some comments. I would really appreciate that. But anyway, once you've had your fill with rsync, you can go ahead and move on to the next video and I'll give you some important next steps that you might want to consider for your learning journey. All right, so episode number 17 is all set in the Bash Scripting series, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful, then please click that like button to let YouTube know that you found this video helpful. And also, please share this series with your friends and colleagues, because when you do so, that really helps me out. Now, unfortunately, the next video in this series is going to be the final video in this series. But even though the next video is the last video, there's no shortage of Bash-related shenanigans on this channel, because on Learn Linux TV, it's all about learning Linux. And after you finish the next episode and then this entire series, what you could do is move on to other tutorials that I have on this channel and you'll learn all kinds of things around Linux. And I highly recommend that you do check out those videos. But in the meantime, what you could do as soon as you're ready is move on to the next and final video and I'll meet you there as soon as you are ready. Thanks for watching.